So we are now in uh, projectile motion. Um, your objective here is to be able to identify physical quantities or components that involves the motion of a projectile. Uh, in your lab, you tried to define projectile motion in your own words. Um, I have asked you to be able to discover what are those quantities. And here, we're going to just reinforce what you have learned. If there's some stuff that you've missed, if there's some stuff that you know that I may have not mentioned, which is a great thing. And you should be able to use them to explain projectile motion. So projectile motion is a two-dimensional motion. In the previous chapter, we've studied simple straight line motion. So object is changing its velocity or having a constant velocity, but it's all straight horizontal. Um, we, we also covered uh, a straight vertical, which is free fall. So throwing objects up, dropping objects down. Uh, you did some labs on that. Now we are talking about nonlinear motion, which is a motion along a curved path. So if you see the skier in here, it is undergoing a projectile motion. And you could see here that the object is accelerating due to gravity. So it accelerates because there's a force that acts on it. And that force is known to be the force of G, which is the force of gravity. So this object is accelerating. So that is acceleration due to gravity. So the question is, we know that it is in motion, but what will cause it to move? There must be some kind of force that acts it to move. So that it that force is the force of gravity. So that's the only force that is acting on this gear, nothing else. Um, we usually ignore air friction in this particular understanding of friction of uh, forces uh, so we ignore it ignore okay so projectile motion is an any object that moves through the air or space as i've said that is only acted upon by gravity and if we consider a resistance which we are not then that might change the way the object move but still gonna follow a curved path what are some example a baseball thrown a cannonball that was shot from uh, the can from um, from the cannon and has thro uh, thrown objects in air and anything else that follow a curved path those are examples of objects in projectile so projectile are traced by looking at its curved path so the curved path is referred to us to be a shape of a parabola so these are examples of objects that are following a curved path so in this case it's mentioned that it has already two components in there the vertical direction and a horizontal velocity so what is in the horizontal what is on the vertical so that's what we're going to cover here in a little uh, deeper understanding so um projectile motion can be understood pretty easily if we uh, look at the um, motion in terms of horizontal and vertical so projectile motion is made up of two components the horizontal the horizontal velocity and the vertical the vertical acceleration so why is that the vertical is accelerating so we're gonna understand that so these are the two components horizontal velocity and vertical acceleration so those are the things that we are going to cover in this lesson so in your simulation um, you identify that the horizontal velocity is this one in here so that is the horizontal 
that is the horizontal velocity. And if you look at it, so we took a picture of the object following that curved path. Even if it follows the curved path, you notice that the direction is always pointing in one direction in here. So it's pointing towards the east, which is positive in this case, but we're looking at the length of the vector. The length does not change. Therefore, we consider the horizontal velocity to be constant. You should have mentioned that in your answer in your lab last class. So the horizontal is constant. It doesn't change. Therefore, it is not accelerating. So there is no force acting on it. No force. No force acting on the horizontal. Now let's take a a look at the vertical acceleration. So in order to understand ver vertical acceleration, we're going to split the flight of this projectile into two. So we're going to split it right halfway to which it reaches its maximum height. So we could see from its parabolic path that this portion is its max height. So we have case one and then here would be case 2. So case 1 is when it was fired and follows a curved path and reaches its max height. Case 2 is when it starts to go back down to earth following a curved path. So from max height to where it will land. So those are our two cases. So we're going to look into that in terms of why is it accelerating. So we're going to look at in terms of the simulator, Check the uh, components, and we're going to look at the vertical velocity. So from there, we will be able to analyze whether the object is uh, accelerating in, in terms of its vertical component. So let's take a look at this. Okay. So we're going to pause it, okay? So if we're going to look at the object's motion, you would notice that the length of the vertical velocity is changing. So from there, you, you'll be able to see. So let's redo that. So we're going to fire it. So let's take a look at the vertical. You would notice that the vertical length is changing. And how does it changing? It is decreasing in length until it reaches its max height. So in this case, we could say that the velocity reaches close to zero. But it's not zero because if it does says zero, then the object will stay there. So it's not going to stay there. It's going to go back to Earth. Therefore, we could say that the velocity at its highest point will be close to zero and then eventually will change. Now, you'll see that the object vertical velocity is changing. It is getting larger. So if we look into your previous knowledge of kinematics, what could you say about the velocity? What could you say about the velocity of the object in vertical? The velocity is changing, right? It is increasing, it is decreasing. So if the velocity is changing, what is another physical quantity that is present? And that is... what physical quantity is present and that is acceleration so 
it's because the velocity is changing, the object is undergoing acceleration. But what do you notice in terms of the acceleration? It's always pointing downward, and its magnitude is always, magnitude is the length, it's always the same. So based from the simulation, we could uh, summarize what we know. So the object is accelerating because it's changing its vertical velocity. Uh, if we notice on the case one here, so on the case one, on case one, you know that the magnitude of the vertical velocity is getting shorter. It's getting shorter until it's close to zero at its max height. So we could say that the magnitude, the length of the arrow, tells us that it is decreasing its velocity. So it is slowing down. Slowing down. Now as it passes its max height and go back to Earth to where it will land, we notice that it is increasing its vertical velocity. So in that sense, we could say that the object is speeding up right before it hits the ground. So in this case, its velocity is changing. If the velocity is changing, we know that it is related to acceleration. And in this case, the objects accelerate due to gravity. So that is in terms of those components. So again, uh, based from this picture in here, one was dropped, one was projected horizontally, they both land at the same time. So we could say that uh, a projectile motion is made up of two components. So we could say here that the speed on the x direction is constant and the y also has a constant acceleration but changing velocity. So again, projectile motion is understood by looking at the horizontal component and the vertical component. So if you launch a projectile at a certain angle, it follows the same principle, except that there is uh, an initial vertical component of the velocity in this case. Um, it's still going to end up following a curved path. So if we look at projectiles that are launched at different angles with the same speed, we would uh, look at that they tend to change in terms of the uh, range. The range is the distance from where it was launched. So that is called the range. So the distance, the distance to where the object was launched is referred to as the range. And this is the angle here. You could see at the shorter angle, smaller angle rather, means shorter range, larger angle means more range, and that's the 45 degree here. But what happens if I set it to 65? So this is a 65 degree angle. You would notice that it was not. So there is a limit to this. There's a limit to which how far would it go. So an object that follows a curved path without a resistance in this case is to be considered in terms of the angle it was projected. So you notice in here that the guy projected the to kick the soccer ball at 15 degrees and and ended up covering this range. Now let's look at if he kicks it at 75 degrees. 
it ended up at the same range. So what does it tell us? If we add the angle, that sums up to what? It sums up to 90 degrees. So angles that sum up at 90 degrees would have, will have equal range. Therefore, the angle to which an object that is thrown in a projectile manner would be able to cover the maximum range. So that's the maximum range is 45. You go beyond that, it's going to get shorter, which is equal to whatever angle you can project it lower than that, that would sum up to 90 degrees. So that's one of the, the quantities that you have to take note. So as you increase the angle within the 45 degree, the range gets larger. So there is direct relationship. However, if it goes past 45, then it changes the range. So it gets shorter, which is equal to whatever smaller angle that would sum up to 90 degrees. Now, what happens if we change the mass? What happens if we change the mass of the object? So let's say we change the we change the mass into something else. So if you look at a different mass, so you have a human here. You have another object. You would notice that they cover the same distance or range. So what does this, this tells us? We know that this object have different mass. If you look at here, this one is about 2000 kilograms. Human is about 70 kilograms in here. A piano is about 400 kilograms. So does mass matter in this case? So mass, mass is irrelevant in the understanding of projectile motion. This is in terms if air resistance is ignored. So if we neglect air resistance, we don't consider that mass would be irrelevant in our study. So this is pretty important in understanding projectile motion because if we include that, that's going to make things complicated to understand that. So if you take higher physics, you will end up adding this physical quantity to be able to understand what will change in your projectile, in the motion of your projectile. So this is it in terms of projectile motion.